Welcome back. Thanks for joining. It's fairly early morning here. A bit grey. Looks like we're in for some rain the next few days, so thought better get out in the garden and harvest anything. Got a bit of an electricity leak here somewhere. The gate is ticking, ticking, which that should not be ticking, ticking. And the ducks, they think they need to be fed, which they've already been fed. So this week I'm going to show you a little bit of the garden, so the autumn garden of what's growing, what's harvestable and um, what I'm planting. So over the last few weeks I've taken some video here there, so I'll pop those up, but I'll show you what we're doing. We, we are now the first week of April, I had to work it out, so we're into our second month of autumn and we know winter is certainly coming because the days are getting a lot shorter. Our daylight savings is about to finish, which means it'll be getting darker very early in the night, but lighter in the morning, which is easier to get up and feed the animals. Um, our chooks are starting to reduce their egg production, which is pretty normal for this time of year, and a lot are molting. And even Copper, my dark egg layer, has stopped laying, so she's having a, a rest for the moment. So I'll show you what's happening in the garden for autumn. Today I'm going to harvest my first cauliflower. I love cauliflower, and this one has been growing I think I planted these cauliflowers, I'd have to look back, but in January at some stage, and I've covered them because of the cabbage butterfly. But this one, let's lift the net. It's had a, a few nibbles on its leaves, but it's starting to uh, get a bit big now. So time to harvest that, I'll harvest that for today. And then we've got another little white one growing here. She looks good. And that's another one in there we can see. Let's have a look. Oh, that looks nice. And then that at the end is a broccoli, but it doesn't look like anything's hanging there. I do, um, when it's really sunny, put a shade cloth on them. So I think that's helped just give them a little bit of shade because they do get burnt if, it, if it's too hot. So I'll get my knife and harvest this collie. So let's harvest this cauliflower. The, um, the leaves the pigs will love. I love brassica leaves. So we'll pull all those off and we'll just chop it off at the bottom here. Beautiful. Probably should have, because it's starting to open up a little bit and a bit of discoloration, so probably should have harvested that two days ago. It'll be nice in the stir fry tonight. And these leaves will go to the pigs and then we'll chop this off at ground level actually you might need my chipper chopper for that and then we'll replant something else in there the garden is looking so green and luscious the zucchini and sweet potato is overtaking the lawn but it's time to harvest the tongue of fire beans that are on the trellis this side of the trellis as opposed to that side that's got a yukon on it and many other climbing beans but time to harvest them and take them out of their pods because I've got some broad beans ready to put in there. So there's quite a lot there. I'm going to pull them off and pod them all. So now that I've pulled all the tongue of fire or balotti beans off, I now need to pod them all. So I've started potting them. Look, at they're such a pretty colour. So these will be stored and used in the winter and I'm sure we're going to have them up until next year when we grow them again because this is a winner and I should be able to save these seeds and start again. So I've got a bucket here and there's still actually some on the vines that I need a ladder to go and get. But they're a really pretty colour. Oh there's a darker one in there in amongst them all. But yeah they're a really So the tomatoes are starting to come to an end apart from all the volunteer ones but the ones that I've planted they've been in here for a while so they're coming to an end there's lots that are sort of getting eaten by bugs but these are all for chickens and pigs which they love but what I did start uh, about a week and a half ago were these snow peas and some snap peas there's a bit of a mix and they've um, come up nicely so now I'm going to plant those where the 
come to the tomatoes. So where the tomatoes are, at the bottom there now, um, I'm planting the peas. So hopefully they'll grow enough so that when the frost come, it won't damage them too much. It may do, but we've got some that are planted. Probably these ones here, you can see are starting to flower. It's only about five in there. That, so this is obviously a different one because it's got a purple flower. Um, probably about five weeks ago so hopefully we'll get some peas very soon from them so the key is to yeah just before something comes out or when something does come out pop something else in just for ground cover and we have got lots of ground cover at the moment ideally I'd pull out all these volunteer tomatoes but I'm just leaving them at the moment because I don't need that space for anything else and it's keeping the ground cooler when the sun's out but also the roots are good Look at this, this is my washing machine, full of tomatoes. I just, I tend to harvest them when they're just turning red and put them on here to ripen up, otherwise critters get them, whether they're possums, birds, um, but we need to make some more relish. The other seedlings I'm gonna start planting today, I planted a couple the other day just to make sure, and they still are good. So I'm going to plant some more, uh, some bok choy. So I'll plant those out here. I planted those in the seedling tray probably about three weeks ago. And I think they're big enough now. They've um, got about three or four true leaves. So time to plant them out. Love bok choy and, and stir fries and nice greens in the winter. And hopefully they won't go to seed too quickly or bolt just harvested some potatoes that have been growing in this row here and they've been in there for so long they've started to regrow so time to pull them out so we'll have those for dinner tomorrow night but this little experiment oh that's Arnie hello so we've got some lettuce growing I've popped some snow peas in where another tomato was and put some more lettuce and then some beetroot and a little bit of dill but they're planted quite close together but the lettuces will grow and then they'll come out and there'll be room for the others to grow fine but I'll show you the bok choy because it's been about two weeks since I showed you when I planted them got them nicely under cover here take this off because it's a little bit cooler today we haven't got the, the white cabbage moth or butterfly whatever you call it so they're looking really good two weeks they've grown quite well and it won't be long they're starting to grow at the base there and we'll be picking them for for dinner this zucchini is just uh has grown fantastic and it started off in this bed and it's gone all the way up here. I've just harvested the leaves that were going all sort of old and found a big zucchini. So that will be for the pigs. They will enjoy. That what, that's what happens when you haven't been in the garden for a few days and it's beautiful growing weather. It goes mad. I'm in the orchard now just checking on this fig tree. We've got three fig trees, two that are really prolific and March and April are our fig times. And we can see in there, there's one ready to harvest but lots and lots of little green ones. So we should be picking figs for a good another couple of weeks. Got to get in early because as you see, the chooks love figs too. So I go in most days and pick figs and they get the they get the ones that are no longer for us. So what else are we harvesting in the garden? I've shown you cauliflower, tomatoes. We've got a few cucumbers left, quite a lot of um, peppers left, which I'm gonna have to get in and harvest those before the frost come. I think I harvested them too early last year. But we've still got some beans that we're um, we're picking. A lot of those are, are starting to get a bit big, but we've got we've got some more beans here, so we're doing those. Yeah, as I said, 
tomatoes. Parsnips not quite ready, want to wait till the first frost until we harvest those. Um, lettuce, potatoes, beetroot, carrots. We're harvesting silver beet leeks. I think that might be about it. And of course, we're still getting zucchinis. So hopefully we'll keep getting a few zucchinis for in the next couple of weeks. And as the days are getting shorter and the frost comes, that will be the end of it. But still producing lots of yummy food. So let's have a chat to Robert. So at the start of the video, you saw that the fence was ticking. So I'll let Robert explain what that was all about and what he did to fix it. So we had a short in the, uh, in the active wire running to the fence. And I originally thought it was coming from here when it runs up and joins into the fence. Because um, I used some secondhand cable in that area and I thought it was leaking there. But it probably took me another three hours to find it. And it was way up around the other side at another fence where the um, where the wire, the fencing wire, had pinched the insulated wire, and it was shorting back through the fence line. And seeing as the chain is the weakest link in the fence, and it's all earth basically, it's just one big earth. It was um, shorting out through the chain on the fence, so it took a little bit of a while to to find it. And while I was at it. Um, I replaced the wire up at the gate um, and I've wherever there's a pinch point on the insulated wire which is this one here uh, which feeds the active into the insulated fence then I put some hose just to protect the the black wire so that it doesn't pinch and break um, and I've also changed these switches to fully covered the uh, the bolts that connect the wires so you can see it's pretty neat here now so you can touch any part of that because one of my grandsons got a big shock when he touched one of the the uh, bolts on the on the switches so thankfully i found it yay and we're so lucky that robert can do all this electrical stuff so that was that was good it took a while mm. so thanks for joining and until next time we'll see you back on the farm see ya